Hi everyone, I think we're just um, have a few more people just logging in, um, but I think we can start. Okay, so um, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Joanna Fitzwilson and I work on the Scottish Home Renewables team here at Energy Saving Trust. Um, today's webinar is about heat pumps and it's part of a series of webinars we're delivering this year. Um, that work for these webinars is funded by the Scottish Government and that's part of their support for home renewables and energy efficiency, which is there to help lower Scottish householders' energy bills, meet climate change targets and build a lower carbon economy. Um, so before we start, I just want to give some housekeeping points. Um, first is that you can hear us, but we can't hear you. That's perfectly normal. Uh, but if you look to the right of your screen, you should see a little control panel. Um, and if you've got any questions during the webinar or have any technical issues or anything, you can just type those questions in there. Um, we'll be able to see them, but other listeners won't be. Um, we're also recording the webinar and we'll be able to send you a link to this later so you can listen again. And finally, we expect the webinar will last approximately 45 minutes, but might be a bit more or a bit less. Um, so we'll just take a quick look at today's agenda before we start. If I can get to that slide. So um, first of all, we're going to speak to um, well, Craig Dolan and perhaps Mike Barson at Valent. I'm going to talk about heat pumps, an overview, um, how they work and what types are available, etc. Then I'll look at some of the advice and support that's available through Home Energy Scotland. Um, and then we're going to speak to uh, to Bev, who is a Green Homes Network member. I'll tell you a little bit about what the Green Homes Network is. Um, but she took the plunge and installed an air source heat pump in her home. So we'll find out how that's gone and um, any sort of tips and advice. And then finally, at the end, if we've got a bit of time, we'll um, look at some questions. OK, so with that, I'm just going to pass over to, um, to Craig Dolan. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Craig Dolan. I'm Product Manager for Renewables for Valent. Uh, so a quick overview of Valent and then we're going to get into the heat pump technology and how it can fit into UK and Scottish homes. So uh, Valent is, our uh, Valent Group is a market leader in central heating appliances. It's still family owned and has been since its conception in 1874. More than 30 million customers across 60 countries. Uh, we have uh, ongoing development for heating systems. So we develop and manufacture our own heating systems from traditional gas boilers, biomass boilers, oil boilers, heat pumps, panel radiators, infrared heaters, cylinders, controls, and everything in between. So a total heating system manufacturer. Uh, why change the way we heat our homes? We've been using flames to heat our homes uh, since we've been in caves, really. Uh, but we can just tell from the weather that we're having at the moment that the climate is changing and we are having an impact. So we need to change the way we heat our homes to decrease that impact. So we need to reduce our emissions, in the air pollution as well as carbon. So all the particulates in the air. We need to reduce running costs because you know costs are forever increasing and we need to make sure that we keep those down. We need to limit our fossil fuel. We've got limited fossil fuel resources. So uh, you know we're currently very, very reliant on North Sea gas and oil and nobody really wants to do any fracking. We've got lots of wind that we can use to turn into electricity. So why not use that? Uh, lower running costs over the lifetime of the system. So we don't we we want to make sure that the heating systems that we design, develop, and install last for a long time. So it's not a just a quick fix, but a a lasting solution for the homeowners. Uh, so you know you fit and forget uh, the only time people really care about their heating is when it's not working. So the, 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 the adage we use uh, here is we, we need to be invisibly brilliant, as in you don't know that we're there, but it just works. We've got a change in climate, as I mentioned, with the you know, record temperatures that we're experiencing at the moment, 20 degrees in February, double the normal temperature that we expect at this time of year. 
if this was August or September and it was double the temperature, I don't think we'd all be pleased about the situation. And there is a change towards electric technologies for heating. So we're moving away from oil and LPG particularly and looking at electricity as, this, uh, as the energy source for our space heating. Uh, so how do we get the maximum benefit from that and make sure that we're all warm and comfortable and we're not paying through the nose for it? Heat pumps and how do they work? Uh, so the first thing to say is heat pumps are not new. They have been around for many, many years. Um, air conditioning is a form of heat pump. Uh, your fridge and your fridge freezers are a form of heat pump. You know, in the 1960s and 70s around Lake Geneva, they were installing heat pumps using the water from the lake to, to heat people's houses. There's over 10 million heat pumps installed in Europe alone. There was over a million installed last year alone. Uh, the UK market is an estimated 30,000 units a year and is growing rapidly. To give you some sort of insight, we, we believe that the market grew 30 to 35% last year on the previous year. So things are starting to change particularly with the CCC report, uh, which has suggested removing natural gas from new build from 2025. So uh, how does the heat pump work? Uh, it moves energy from one area to another. So if you, if you take a look at this image on the side, if we start at number one, this is the evaporator or collector. So this collects energy from the ambient air or ground, which is used to boil the refrigerant. And the refrigerant boils at minus 25 degrees centigrade. So you know, when, when it's at zero or minus 10, it still boils the refrigerant, which goes to a compressor, which squeezes the refrigerant. So much like a bicycle pump, if you put your thumb over the top of the bicycle pump and start pumping, your thumb, your thumb will get very hot very quickly. It's exactly the same principle. So from this, the hot high pressure refrigerant goes round to a condenser. So on the condenser, you have the hot high pressure refrigerant on one side and your radiator water on the other. And the heat transfers from the refrigerant to your water circuit and it heats up that water and goes around your heating system into your coil in your hot water cylinder. <coughs> Excuse me. So the refrigerant comes around, it's, it's a bit cooler now and it's still at high pressure and it goes to an expansion valve which releases the presser, pressure which is much like an aerosol can. So the aerosol can is quite small, you press the press the top down and it sprays uh, the fluid out, releasing the pressure. The refrigerant then turns into a, uh, in, into a kind of, it's still gaseous, but it's called slush, and it goes exactly around the same circuit again. So that is the refrigerant circuit. Uh, evaporation, uh, pressure, passing on the heat, releasing the pressure, back to evaporation again. So, that has been used time and time again for heating and or cooling. So uh, air to water heat pumps. So there are two main types of air to water heat pumps. They're called air to water because they're using the air as the environmental source. And there's a uh, monoblock and split. So a monoblock air to water heat pump is where the refrigerant circuit is all in one unit. So uh, the, basically the, the water flowing through your radiators uh, comes out the back of it and goes back into it. These are the most popular types of air to water heat pumps in the UK. 
The other type is the refrigerant split, which is over here, and it has an outdoor module and an indoor module. And the outdoor module collects the energy from the air and it transfers it into the indoor module via refrigerant pipe work. And then the condenser part of, of the refrigerant circuit is actually in the indoor unit and that's where your heating flow and return come from. So they are both using the outside air as their heat source. Uh, it's exactly the same circuit as we spoke about on the previous slide. So the air boils the refrigerant, the compressor squeezes it, passes it through to a condenser and the condenser transfers the heat into the hot water circuit and then the refrigerant comes back, the pressure is released and it starts all over again. They do work even when it's in freezing conditions. So they will work down to minus 15 and in some cases minus 20 degrees centigrade. So uh, the, the other thing to note about air to water heat pumps is their efficiency and their output changes as the air temperature changes. So as it gets warmer, the, the, the heat pump has to work less hard. So its efficiency goes up. And then when it's colder, its efficiency goes down because it has to work harder to extract the air. But when you size your heating system, you size the heat pump to make sure that it can cope and work efficiently when it's coldest, so when you need your heating the most. Then we move on to ground source or water source heat pumps. So exactly the same principle, uh, you have a collector or a tube pipework that goes into the ground and uh, in there is a, a solution called brine or glycol. This collects the heat energy, the latent heat energy from the ground. So once you get past a meter and a half, the ground is generally 12 degrees centigrade. So you collect that heat from the ground, you transfer it into the heat pump and the same refrigerant circuit works and you get space heating. So the glycol or the brine will come back anywhere between zero and five degrees, which is plenty enough temperature to make the refrigerant circuit work. When water is used, underground water or a lake, if you happen to be lucky enough to have a lake on your property, um, uh, the water's generally around 10 degrees. So it's always warmer than the ground. So what that means is you get higher efficiencies. So the, 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 the the heat pump will give you more power because the source temperature is higher and the heat pump will have to work less hard to get a usable heat out of it. So water source is, is very good if, if you have access to it. There's two types of ground collectors, really. There is the uh, ground away, uh, array where it goes out flat. It's also known as slinkies. So a big coil of pipe is put down about a metre and a half to two metres in a field and then reburied. Obviously, you need the, uh, the land space to do that. And there is a borehole system where you where you drill down up to 100 metres at a time. Uh, boreholes are slightly more efficient in, in that because they go deeper, the ground temperature is more stable. So uh, they tend to work better and you don't need as much space. So you could have plenty of boreholes in a, in a, you know, 50 meter square garden. And then the third system that I wanted to talk to you about is a hybrid system. So this is where you have a heat pump working together with a traditional heating system, whether that be an oil boiler, LPG or natural gas. So there's two types of systems, really. There's a bivalent and a tariff controlled. So the bivalent system is uh, a very simple system. It has a standard switching point, normally temperature. 
So, for example, if it was uh, zero and above, the heat pump would be doing your space heating. And then when it drops below zero, your boiler would take over and do your heating. This means that you get the efficiencies and the cost savings of the heat pump when it's its most efficient. And then you get the comfort of the boiler uh, when, the, when the weather gets colder in winter. The other, the, work, the other way to control this is tariff controlled. So you can put in how much you pay for your electricity, your gas, your oil or your LPG. And the control will work out for itself which is the most efficient energy source to use. So it might be that your heat pump is more efficient to use and then your boiler acts as a turbo. Uh, so it bring, the boiler will come on for 10 minutes to get the heating system up to temperature and then the heat pump will take over to uh, tickle the heating along if you like. I actually have a hybrid system on my house and um, it works quite nicely. My utility bills for last year were £500 for the year. Uh, that's including uh, the subsidy that I got, the RHI. So hybrid systems are really good for larger or older, harder to heat properties where you know uh, heat pumps may not be able to cope when it's extremely cold or if there's a risk to the electricity supply and you need a secondary heat source to make sure that you stay stay warm when it gets really cold. So uh, with a hybrid system, you reduce your running costs and your emissions, and it's kind of a, a, a stepping stone from going to a full heat pump system. So some frequently asked questions that we get, uh, what is COP? COP is coefficiency of performance, or it's how efficient the heat pump is at a fixed point, like, like MPG in a car. So you'll see COP figures of 4.5 or 3.5 or, or, or anything in between. What that means is uh, for every one kilowatt of electricity, you will get 4.5 kilowatts of heat. So in terms of efficiency, that's 450% efficient, which doesn't really make sense, which is why we use coefficiency of performance. But the coefficiency of performance is at a fixed point in time. So typically it's a air seven, water 35, which means that the air temperature is seven degrees outside and the flow temperature coming out of the heat pump is 35 degrees. So what is SCOP? SCOP is the seasonal coefficient of performance. And this is a calculated efficiency based on your property and the heat pump. <coughs> and uh, it's normally lower than COP. And if you have an SCOP of three, that means that over a 12 month period, the heat pump system will give you three kilowatts of heat for every one kilowatt of electricity that you use. So it's 300 percent efficient. Uh, so what is weather compensation? Weather compensation is a way to control your heating system. So basically what the control will do is it will look at the outside temperature it will look at the indoor temperature and it will say, I need to go, I need to come on at 50% to make sure that the, the house stays warm. It's very, very similar to the dial on your stove or your cooking hob. You know, if you're boiling some water, you probably turn the hob up to six or full power. And then when it starts boiling, you'll probably turn it down to four or three just to keep the water boiling along. It's exactly the same principle. So instead of leaving, leaving the heating system on full power when it doesn't need to be and then turning off and turning back on, it just turns the, the heating system, the, the heat pump or the heat or the boiler down. So it's only working as hard as it needs to. What is sound power? Sound power is the amount of sound the heat pump actually makes and sound pressure 
is the sound you hear from different distances. So the way that it was explained to me is if you imagine a pond and you throw a stone into the middle of the pond, the stone hitting the water is the sound power and the ripples coming away from the uh, from where the stone hit the water is the pressure. <coughs> so what you hear is less as you move further away. So when it comes to planning and things like that, it's the sound power level that's important. Can heat pumps connect with m multiple renewable sources together, for example, solar thermal and heat pumps or solar electric and heat pumps? Uh, simple answer is yes. Uh, uh, th there's different ways of doing it. Um, I can go into them if anybody's interested at a later date, but yes, you can. Uh, some simple myth busting. Uh, heat pumps must have underfloor heating to work. No, they don't. 90% of heat pumps installed in the UK are installed with standard uh, radiators. Um, sometimes you have to make the radiators bigger. The bigger the radiators, it just means that uh, you don't have to put such high temperature water through the radiator to heat the room. So the bigger the radiator, the lower the flow temperature, the lower the flow temperature, the more efficient the system. That's exactly the same with boilers as it is with heat pumps. Heat pumps only work in well insulated homes. <coughs> Again, not true. They work better in well insulated homes, just like a boiler does. You know, if you're cold, most people will stick on a jumper rather than stand up and start doing star jumps. You should always take a fabric first approach to make sure that you minimize your heat loss of your property before you do any kind of heating system. Heat pumps don't work when it's cold. Uh, again, it's not true. Uh, we actually did a marketing campaign uh, at the beginning of last year where we installed a air to water heat pump in the Arctic Circle uh, and we heated up a weather station to 21 degrees when it was minus 16 to 20 around it. So they work perfectly well when it's cold. Heat pumps are a new fad technology. Uh, no, heat pumps have been around for a very long time and they are likely to become one of the more prevalent heat sources in the UK moving forward. And heat pumps won't work in Scotland because it's cold or they won't work in Scottish or UK houses. Uh, again, it's not true. Uh, we've got quite a few heat pump installations in Scotland. They, they all work fine. Uh, so it's just a slightly different way of doing your heating system but as long as you do your research pick your installer uh, uh, carefully you, you will have a comfortable clean low carbon heating system and that's me done thank you very much Uh, thanks for that, Craig. Um, that was really useful to get a good overview. Obviously, there's a lot of options out there and quite a lot to think about. Um, so I just wanted to cover some of the support that's available, not just to help you install a heat pump, but also maybe to help you make a decision about whether a heat pump or another renewable technology was for you. Um, Energy Saving Trust offers um, advice and support to uh, householders in a number of ways. Um, we've got support from um, in financial schemes and we've also got advice through both our website and tools, which I'll cover a bit later on, um, and also um, through our advice network called Home Energy Scotland, which um, I'll take a look at first. Um, so. Home Energy Scotland is an advice um, network of five advice centres across Scotland and you can see on the map there um, the advice centre areas um, and you can reach them on that 0808 number that's in the bottom of all of these slides. Um, so it's managed by Energy Saving Trust and funded by the Scottish Government and if you were to phone the number you'd be able to speak to an advisor um, about improvements you can make to your property in terms of energy efficiency, renewables, um, as well as transport, water, resources and waste. And what's really important is all of this advice is completely free and impartial. And because we've got the different advice centres, they can also localise it as well, because uh, we cover the whole of Scotland. Um, 
In addition to this, each of the advice centres also has um, specialist advisors. Um, they have additional training for things like renewables and solid wall insulation. Um, and they can offer you sort of more tailored support as well. Um, this specialist in-home advice service is aimed at owner occupiers and private sector landlords. Um, and they can, um, in some cases, um, offer you advice over the phone, but they can also sometimes, if it's appropriate, offer you a free home visit where they would produce a tailored energy report for your property. And that would highlight suitability of certain renewable measures, which could include heat pumps, um, energy efficiency improvements that you might need, and also solid wall insulation. And these reports also include some information about sort of savings that you might see, an estimate of them, and also would help to explain um, financial support as well. And this is just uh, a little sort of extract from a report, just to read the sort of thing that you might see in a, an in-home visit report. Um, we use a sort of bespoke modelling software that's based on SAP, and um, advisors can sort of create a package scenario for you. So if you were interested in, for example, um, you didn't know whether you wanted to consider an air source heat pump or a ground source heat pump, they could look at a scenario for each of these. Um, in some cases, um, these reports can actually be used to help you access funding if it's a, an energy saving trust scheme. Um, but I think one thing I just want to highlight from the start is that the best thing to do is to speak to Home Energy Scotland first um, about any sort of financial support that might be available to you because they can go through all of the options. So financial support. Um, two schemes I'm going to talk about are the Home Energy Scotland Loan and the Domestic Renewable Heat Incentive. These are two schemes available at the moment that we know cover um, heat pumps, ground source, air source and water source heat pumps. Um, we've also got um, a webinar on funding support as well that's on our YouTube channel. Which, uh, there's a link at the bottom there that you might want to, to listen to too. Um, these are two schemes that are currently available. They are um, available for heat pumps, but again, some support for householders can be dependent on personal circumstances and location. So um, do speak to Home Energy Scotland first before you start making, um, making decisions. Um, so look at the Home Energy Scotland loan first, and that is an interest-free loan funded by the Scottish Government. And uh, we, we manage that here at Energy Saving Trust and administer the loan. So if you apply to this scheme, it'd be, be us that'd be processing it. Um, one of the barriers to installing any renewable technology can be the initial investment. Um, it can be a higher cost measure to install a heat pump as opposed to um, a new boiler. Um, and this is here to help make the upfront cost more affordable by allowing you to sort of spread that cost um, over time. Um, the loan isn't just for heat pumps. It supports a range of um, renewable technologies as well as energy storage systems and energy efficiency improvements. Again, available to owner occupiers and eligible private landlords, and you can get up to £38,500 available per household. Um, that's if you were to get the maximum funding for every measure that you could combine. Um, there's more information on our website. There's a link at the bottom there. Um, and that's got some more of our um, eligibility criteria as well, which um, Home Energy Scotland could also speak to you about. Um, so there's not enough time to talk about all of the criteria here, but just some of the main eligibility factors you would need to consider are the, the first is that you would need a Home Energy Scotland referral um, to uh, to apply to the scheme. Just make sure that they, they cover all the advice that you, you might need to see if this system would be suitable for your property and also to check for other support so you can make a decision as to, to you know what you wanted to install and how to do that. Um, second thing is that if you were to install a heat pump, it would need to be certified uh, under the microgeneration certification scheme, your installer would also need to be MCS certified too. Um, for heat pumps, you would also need to be um, using a product that was listed on the RHI product eligibility list, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and crucially, we would also need to know that the, the heat pump or any other measure you wanted to install with a loan was suitable for your property. So we need to see that it was recommended in a qualifying energy report. Um, Home Energy Scotland can advise on these in some cases. They can provide them, such as with the, uh, the visit report. Um, and, and if not, they, they can talk about other reports that you could use instead. Um, so we're also going to talk about the renewable heat incentive. And you can combine 
um, loan funding for an air source heat pump with an application to the Renewable Heat Incentive as well. But it's important to note that these aren't linked schemes, so you would need to make sure you were eligible for both. Um, one very important factor with the loan is you need to have a loan offer before you start the work. So again, it's really good to speak to Home Energy Scotland at the start of your journey. So if you're thinking about installing a heat pump, you don't need to have, um, you know, gone down the route of finding an installer or anything like that before you speak to Home Energy Scotland. You can speak to them in the initial stages when you're just starting to think about what you might want to do. Um, funding is subject to availability, um, but it's also interest free and uh, there's just a small administrative fee, um, which would be a maximum of £150 for any one loan application. And you can use the same loan for a number of measures. So this is just an example of the funding that you could get for per system. So that would be a maximum of £10,000 for an air source, ground source or water source heat pump, um, unless you're heat pump was to cost less than £10,000, in which case the maximum loan funding would be the 100% of the value of the heat pump you installed. Um, Craig also mentioned um, insulating your property as well, that just can, it can help make your heat pump a bit more efficient. Um, you can get funding for um, insulation under the loan, uh, so that's an example of the total funding available. And you can also get um, some cash back for, for these measures too. Cashback is not available for um, renewable technologies installed under the loan, and that's mainly because there's other incentives available for those uh, for those measures. So if you did install a heat pump, you uh, with insulation, you could get some cashback for the insulation that you ins installed, and then if you were to um, apply to the domestic RHI, you could get um, some money back for your heat pump as well. I uh, should note as well that the cashback funding is also subject to availability, um, so it's uh, you need to apply for that to, to um, have that allocated to you. So the Domestic Renewable Heat Incentive is a little bit different in that this is a UK-wide scheme funded by the UK government and it's Ofgem that administer this scheme. Um, with this, with this scheme, you would get quarterly payments over seven years for the renewable heat you generate. Um, so if you install a heat pump, you could um, you, that, that could be an eligible measure. Um, you would apply for this after you've installed and you would be allocated a tariff rate for the, the heat you generate. And that would stay the same um, over the seven years with some uh, some changes made due to um, inflation, etc. Again. Then you need to use an MCS product and installer, uh, same as a loan, and um, you would also need to make sure that your, the product, the heat pump you installed, was also listed as eligible on the RHI product eligibility list. Um, that's a requirement of the Home Energy Scotland loan too, and um, if you look at um, our uh, web page at the bottom there for the RHI, you can um, uh, you can find a link to the product eligibility list and also the domestic RHI calculator, which can help estimate potential payments. RHI calculators on the government, the UK government website, and you can either use some information from your EPC or just answer some question on your property. Um, so it's important to remember, Home Energy Scotland specialists can advise on the rules of this scheme, but because we don't administer it, uh, it would need to be off gem that confirmed eligibility. Um, just pause for a moment just to say if you have any questions about this or um, um, uh, Craig's slides, um, please do just um, type them inside. I forgot to say that earlier. So that's financial support that's available and also the support you can get from Home Energy Scotland in terms of uh, home visits and over the phone. We've also got some online support, um, some, t some tools and calculators. Um, so if you were to look at our website, you'd find quite a few things. We've got um, pages on each of the renewable technologies, including heat pumps. We've also got individual pages for um, grants and loan schemes. You can find out more about them. And we also have some tools. Um, one tool you might be interested in if you're using if you're um, using our website to research heat pumps is our renewable selector tool. Um, it can answer some questions about your property and it can, you know, answer with with what um, technologies might potentially be suitable for that. Um, another one you might be interested in is a renewables installer finder tool um, to help you find an installer. 
Um, so the MCS website lists all MCS certified installers and products. Um, this tool is one that we host on the Energy Saving Trust website and it's a voluntary database where MCS installers that operate in Scotland can sign up to voluntarily um, and leave a little bit of information about their company, uh, potentially some offers and their customers can leave reviews of the work that they've done. So it covers every Scottish local authority um, and it can be really useful if you're looking for an installer in your area and you want to find out a bit more about them. Um, so you can search by technology, distance, you can search by installer name and you search for ratings and offers. And finally, um, another tool that we've got I just want to cover briefly is the Green Homes Network, which is also a voluntary database, but in this time, instead of installers, it's a database of householders um, that have installed um, energy efficiency measures or renewable technologies or both. Um, you can search the tool by your postcode area and uh, with this tool, you can also search by property type as well, which is quite important, I think, um, because if you're living in a flat, you might just be interested in what other people in flats have done. Uh, or if you've got a, you know, a, a very old building, you might want to see what, what people in, in older properties have done. Um, and it's built around case studies, so you can search the tool and it'll generate a map of results, um, which allows homeowners to share their experience through their case studies and you can find um, key studies for all sorts of properties. We've got, um, you know, people that have, in, you know, purpose-built, eco-built property. It's powered entirely by renewables. And we've also got, you know, listed buildings where people have installed just energy efficiency measures and really improved their um, their warmth and comfort. Um, so you can visit the, the Green Homes Network at that link below and um, have a look around and look for people that have installed heat pumps nearby you um, or in your area. And in some cases, Home Energy Scotland might even be able to um, liaise between you and the homeowner to, you know, ask them some questions if you've got specific questions you'd like to answer. Um, or in some cases, they might even be able to um, arrange a visit. Which um, brings me on to our final part of our webinar. Um, it's always really useful in these uh, webinars if we can speak to someone who's actually um, installed in real life and see how they've found the um, found the process. So I'm just going to bring on Beverly, who's a Green Homes Network member that has installed um, an air source heat pump and solar thermal panels, um, just to find out a little bit more about that. So I'm just going to see if I've got Beverly on the line. Sorry, technical. She's... Hi, Beverly. How are you? Hi there. Good, <laughs> Thank you very much for coming along to join us. Um, so you've installed an air source heat pump and solar thermal panels. Could you tell us a bit about what your motivation for that was and why you did it? We had bought a really old, well, a really bad 70s house. It needed everything done. It needed fully mm -hmm. renovated. The central heating system was 40 years old. So it made sense at that point to to look at renewables, um, just the way things are going with the climate and mm. um, you never know what's going to happen with energy prices. So I started looking in mm -hmm. renewables first. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a sort of environmental motivation as well. That's, yeah. That's good. Um, you actually had a home visit from a specialist I was just talking about earlier. Um, so that's just an example of the sort of information you might get in a report. It's not actually your report. Um, but did you find the visit service helpful and what did it cover? Did you? I did. Um, you don't know where to start. It's quite new. So um, they, I felt that the advisor put me through the right path, um, covering everything first. So I think from the installation point of view, my house was pretty drafty. So I had to bring the energy report up from, a, I think it was it was lower than a D. It had to be a D in order to get the heat pump. Um, and then he was able to tell me what loans were available, which was great because we had a lot of work to do. Um, mm -hmm. And money was thin on the ground so that was great and so from there we were able to apply for the loan and uh, yeah so it was it was pretty simple once I'd got in touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've got some photos of your yeah what you've installed so there's your air source heat pump up on the left there just outside your property. Um, wh when did you install your heat pump? 
So that was October 2016, so two two and a bit years now. All oh, right, so you've had it for a while. And uh, what was the original heating system? Was it, was, it was gas central heating. Well, heating. Um, so the the loan you used is it's a little bit older than the one that I was I was discussing discussing, but it was sort of, it's sort of similar. Similar yes. loan. Um, and you. Have you seen any savings since you installed their source heat pump or? I think it... so. I mean, we are heavy users of energy. There's five of mm -hmm. us in the house. We all love our showers and baths and uh, kids don't know that you're supposed to switch lights off. So, yeah. um, yes, it's 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 pretty much the same, a, a little bit cheaper. But I think what might be helping is we have also got solar thermal. Um, so obviously in the summer months, that might be mm -hmm. paying for the water most of the time right. um, but I am no worse off for changing from gas and electric to just fully electric um, probably slightly better off. Well that's that's good to hear um, so you find that the solar thermal and the air source heat pump work quite well together? Yes uh, yeah no it is good and it's nice to think that uh, you mm -hmm. can waste not waste but we're using a lot of water in our house so yeah. that it must be covering quite a lot of the costs. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned that you feel that it's been sort of beneficial. Has there been any downsides at all? Have you had any sort of maintenance issues or repairs? No, or? no oh. I don't have to think about mm -hmm. it at all. It, it, it basically, as you can see in the bottom right hand, that's mm -hmm. all that's in our house, that tiny clock. If we need more heat, we just turn it up. If we need more water, we can ask for more. And I just forget about it. So we've not, we've not had any problems and it does just feel like and look like gas central heating. Mm -hmm. um, so did you live in your property for long before you had the air source heat pump or is there... No, uh, I think we were only in a few months, but the central heating system that was in was wasn't mm -hmm. working. Basically, mm -hmm. it, was, it was on its last legs. Right. Mm -hmm. So you just sort of part of your um, decoration and all that, you sort of did the, yeah. the, the bigger work of installing. Yeah, it's the messier work, isn't it? When you've got to rip up all the floors and um, so it was a, it was good to look at heating first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so would you recommend air source heat pumps to other householders? Absolutely. It's it's mm -hmm. just as warm as gas central heating. It works the same. It's slightly mm -hmm. cheaper. I, I can't. I, to me, it's a no brainer. It's yeah. and I'm not worried about energy prices going up from the gas point of view anyway. Yeah, I suppose that could be a concern, especially if you've got five of you in the, in the yeah. house. <laughs> um, is there anything you think you would have done differently if you were to to do it again. We always ask this just in case it's, you know, people can learn from mistakes. But mm. No, uh, it, we've renovated a lot of houses, we've had a lot of gas central heating systems going in, it all seemed it took the same uh -huh. amount of time um, and everything works perfectly well so no I, I wouldn't change it. Mm -hmm. And did you find that the, the, the process of installing was quite straightforward? Of like It wasn't too disruptive because you've got five in the property? I suppose it was different because you had a heating system that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's it. It's, it's just mm -hmm. the same. Um, if anyone's ever had gas central heating, um, so the obviously the floorboards had to come up, all the pipes had to be renewed, all the radiators. So the first week can be, mm -hmm. you know, quite hard going, but they, they were mm -hmm. pretty good. It made sure we had water as long as we could. And the second week was all about just connecting to the to the fan outside and all the contraptions you can see in my garage there with. Um, the storage unit and everything else so that that it didn't really take two weeks the second week I think there were three days and then it was up and running so it was it was no different. Oh that's good then um, and just finally have you got any other plans to install any other measures or? Well we've at the moment we've put in for a loan for solar PV and a Tesla battery so it would be, it'd be quite right. nice to yeah. get to the point where we're nearly off grid. Yeah no that sounds, that sounds excellent um, yeah so it's probably basically the same loan I was talking about um, that you had previously that exists now that, that covers that. Um, yeah. It's, it's good to see that people are you know, connecting so, um, renewable technologies. Um, so I think we'll just see if we've got any um, questions then for, for you or for Craig. Um, actually, I've got one question that, um, that's for me actually. Um, Someone's asked if funding is available for self-built properties um, for heat pumps and glazing. Um, yes, the Home Energy Scotland loan can be used um, for self-built for renewable technologies. 
Um, there's some other criteria which um, you would need to need to um, need to cover. Uh, you would need to have, uh, for example, planning permission for the work, um, as in the, the self-built property. Um, and we would also need to see some uh, some proof of ownership later. Um, but it is available for uh, for new builds that want to put in a heat pump. Um, I'm just going to see if there's anything else. Mm. Yeah, so we've got one question about us adding an extension to a house and whether loan funding is available for um, wall insulation for the existing structure and the extension. Um, there would be loan funding available for insulation in the existing property, but not in the extension. Um, and we've got another question, which is for um, for Craig. She'd like to let know a little bit more about how we could combine renewable technologies, such as a heat pump and PV. Uh, hi, yeah. Uh, it, uh, solar PV and heat pumps are very, very complementary. So there are systems available where when you're generating electricity, it will direct it to the heat pump. So it promotes self-consumption. So you're running the heat pump for free. And the intelligence in the system will mean that if you have a small buffer store or, or, or a hot water tank, a hot water cylinder, it will overheat the cylinder and the, bu and the buffer store. So it might be if you're at work during the day and the sun's blazing at 12 o'clock in the day, in the middle of the day, the heat pump will be on, heating your house or heat, heating the, the buffer store and the hot water tank and overheating it. So when you get in at five o'clock, your heating is on, but your heat pump isn't actually on because there's already stored heat in your house. So they're very, very, very complementary. And you know, if you're if you're going down the route of of batteries as well, you, you can depending on the battery system you get, you can have the heat pump running from the battery uh, and all sorts. So they're very complementary. And working with solar thermal, uh, again, I think the homeowner mentioned Beverly mentioned that that works, and yeah, that works perfectly. So yeah, you, you know, realistically. Clear if it, you know if it keeps on getting as warm as it is at the moment, uh, your heat pump could, in theory, do cooling in the summer as well. If you have an air to water or a ground source heat pump, if the heat pump's capable of doing that, so yeah, very, very complementary. PV promoting self consumption, it's uh, definitely the way I think it should go, and it's the way that I'm going to go with my own house, so yeah, definitely. Thanks, Craig. Um, just while I've got you there, there's another couple of questions as well that um, you might be able to help with. Um, first was, um, can I keep my standard size radiators or do I need to invest in underfloor heating instead? Um, is that something people would need to need to do? Uh, OK, so the radiator question is a good one. Uh, and it's a long answer, unfortunately. So <laughs> you, you, your radiators, um, if they were sized correctly, were sized so they would have a 70 degree or 60 degree hot water temperature flowing through them. If you want it to work efficiently with a heat pump, then you really you want 55 or 45 degree water going through the radiators. So, but if you've, but that doesn't mean that you have to like, install a radiator the same size as a wall it's kind of if you've done fabric improvements to your house so if you know when your original heating system was put in you had single glazing and no cavity wall and now you have double glazing and cavity wall insulation and you've got uh, loft insulation it might be that the radiator is the right size um, your installer will do a room by room heat loss calculation and he will make sure or they will make sure that the radiator is the right size to make the system more efficient. So it might be that you don't need to change your radiators. It might be that you need to change some of them or you might choose to change all of them because if your radiators have been in for more than 20 years, 
uh, and my, my boss is a is a bike person so he he kind of says you wouldn't put a new engine on your motorbike and not change the tires which is kind of what you'd be doing if you replaced your heat pump and didn't replace your radiators so you don't have to if money's re really tight but it would be something that i would recommend Thanks for that, Craig. Um, so just going to do one final question. I realise we've just gone over 45 minutes a little bit, uh, but it's another one for you. Um, someone's mentioned that um, for heat pumps, it looks like there's quite a lot of equipment involved, um, and they just wondered how much space is needed to dedicate to, to having an air source heat pump. Okay, so uh, with a typical boiler, if it's a wall-hung boiler uh, and a system boiler and it has a hot water tank, with an air source heat pump, the air source heat pump would go outside, obviously, and you'd have to get a new hot water tank. So uh, theoretically, you'd gain the wall space that you'd lose from getting rid of your, uh, you'd gain the space from removing your wall hung boiler. Depending on the system you have, so the more technology you add, the more system components you would require. So with, with solar thermal, for example, you would need uh, additional expansion vessels and pumps to pump the fluid around the solar system. But uh, again, that's something that your installer would be able to talk you through. Uh, in my house, I just have a wall hung module, which is smaller than the boiler. It's next to my boiler and um, that's all I have inside. So. Standard heat, uh, standard airing cupboard. So not much different really from, from a boiler in that sense, I guess. No, no not mm -hmm. much different. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, I think we'll um, finish off there. We've had some other questions which we can take a look at. Um, but I just want to say thanks very much to, to you, Craig, and to you, Bev, for coming along to join us. Um, there's a link here where you can find out a bit more about any anything else that's um, coming up, any events or webinars. Um, we run these throughout the year, so if you just keep an eye out there, you can see what we're up to. Um, and so I just want to say thanks very much to you all for joining. Thank you. Bye.